Welcome back, everyone. Next up, we have Decentral Life. It trades on the OTC pink sheets under the symbol WDLF and is a technology business incubator that provides tech startups with C technology development, legal and executive leadership, making it easier for their founders to focus on raising capital, perfecting their business model, and growing their network usership. Please welcome its CEO, Ken Tapp, and the president, Todd Markey. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks. Good to be here. All right, take it away. Okay. Well, for those of you who are not familiar with our company, as you just mentioned, we are a uh, tech incubator. We've been in business since January of 2013. So we just hit our uh, nine-year mark this last month. And uh, really leading up through the, uh, the middle of last year, very focused as a tech incubator that, uh, you know, if, if you're not familiar with a tech incubator, what we do is we take startup companies that have gone through that seed round and they've raised their capital. They've got, of course, a, a great idea they need uh, to get out to market. Oftentimes they do, and then they need to make some adjustments with their plan. And that's where we we step in. We, we, we don't take over, but we help guide them with uh, adjusting that plan, we help uh, make certain that the, co the company is well positioned to not only grow, but reach a liquidity event. For instance, a merger or acquisition, or even an IPO, an initial public offering. And so uh, before we get too far along here, I'm going to pull up our safe harbor because we will talk about uh, some, some forward looking projections and things that uh, not only are we focused on this year, but in future years. And of course, we're also in the blockchain, AI, crypto space and NFT space. And so these are emerging industries that you just can't help but talk about the future. And so uh, as you're reading through that uh, briefly, let me just point out that we got to this point because of the amazing shareholders that we have. You might be listening and you are a shareholder or you're thinking about becoming a shareholder in our company. Uh, we really look at our shareholders as a huge asset for what we do. And the reason for that, uh, different than some, some other companies in the, the mid cap and micro cap and even nano cap space is that um, we have companies that need you as a shareholder to help get behind them. Sometimes it's just to get behind their, their business growth and be part of what they're doing and, and be an online influencer of sorts. Uh, and then there are other times where we get closer and closer to, for instance, an IPO with one of those companies, and they need your shareholder support when they go public on whatever exchange that might be. And so we, we look at our shareholders as an, a, a very important asset in what we do. And as a result, we do an awful lot of communication. We do a podcast almost every few weeks and constant flow of news and information about the company and the companies that are in our program. So on, on that note, I'm going to move right into the presentation and hand it off to our president, Todd Markey. Yeah, thanks so much, Ken. Um, as you can see right here on the slide deck, Decentral Life, using blockchain and AI technology. For those who are new to the company and receiving the story for the same for the first time, you may not be aware that at the beginning of this year, we had a names change to Decentral Life Network from our previous name, Social Life Network. You know, uh, part of this underlining technology utilizing blockchain and AI has always been a core part of our business, but we've always intended to build niche social networks within these niche communities where enthusiasts and like-minded individuals can really have a safe space to operate and to get to know each other and, and utilize sharing resources and, uh, and furthering their own business initiatives. And we have always had e-commerce capabilities built into these networks. Well, just at the start of this year, uh, as I said, we've had this plan for a long time to get into building out decentralized social networks and being able to help be a, an incubator that really helps facilitate growth and execution for companies that are in the blockchain, cryptocurrency, DeFi, and smart contract application space. So here's a couple of the core pillars that I was just referring to. We utilize blockchain and AI technology. The artificial intelligence technology that we've always used has helped to be able to replicate 
and quickly bring up and bring up to speed new technology programs and licensees that are coming through our network that AI is used to be able to fix bugs and be able to quickly add on features and grow and scale quickly for the clients that are within our network. And, and, and technology using blockchain is you know, an incubator that helps provide the tools, the access to capital, the management, the oversight, the need for developers that have the expertise in this blockchain and DeFi space. And within our networks, within our ecosystem of all of our licensees that we've built out, we now have a coin that can be utilized that can be earned through interaction, inviting friends, liking photos, being active on our network, and a coin that can be used across all of our networks as a native currency uh, that's used as transactions and can be earned, as I indicated earlier. Now, uh, as Todd just mentioned, at the beginning of this year, we had launched, uh, uh, actually just last week, we launched our initial coin offering. And leading up to uh, the beginning of this year, uh, what we needed to do is not only find the technology that was going to make that process a lot simpler. One of, uh, on, and on that note, one of the companies that we helped last year inside of our tech incubator, MJ Link, went through a reggae offering. And what we found in that process is that there are only a few companies out there that provide uh, that technology to help shareholders uh, first of all, get through the investment process, but then post-investment, communicate with them, have access to uh, their stock certificates or whatever it might be, and be able to have better communication directly with founders. And so we built some technology just for that. And as we got into the beginning of this year, we just knew that we were going to have to build our own technology to prepare for our ICO. At the same time, because we're a tech company, we always are thinking about other companies out there that could utilize the technology that we build internally. And so we needed to create a few things, starting with a digital wallet, because we're talking about an initial coin offering here. Other companies that we are looking at in the future to be able to provide the, our technology for initial coin offerings and uh, NFTs and anything in the blockchain space will require some sort of wallet. Now we've created two types, a custodian and a non-custodial wallet. And this means that in the case, the business needs to really manage the digital wallet process for their shareholders, they can do that leading right up to and through that coin offering. Um, and then as a custodian wallet, that hands over all of the control to that investor, that person who has those digital assets and needs to put them into their, their own wallet. Uh, in addition, we of course needed to have a platform where you could actually come in as an investor and go through the entire vetting process that we have to do and other companies will have to do to make certain that they know their customer, that they've made sure that there's no uh, money laundering or the AML checks and the accreditation checks. Because of course, right now, important to point out, our initial coin offering is for accredited investors only. We believe that that's going to be a very popular path for other companies, be it public and private, to get a, a uh, token, even if it's a utility token, out to market. And therefore, uh, you've got to go through the process to make certain that those investors are accredited and fall under that Regulation D 506C offering criteria. So we built our own ICO platform that not only does that aspect of it, but it allows the investor to come in and constantly manage and, and see what is going on with the stages of that token offering and their own position in it. And then that token offering system needed to be connected with, of course, the most popular platforms that are out there uh, to uh, be able to transfer back and forth. Uh, and when I say platform, I'm talking about coin and um, NFT exchanges. And so we built our own exchange that communicates with other exchanges like a Coinbase uh, or a Voyager or a Binance and, and all of the others, Uniswap, et cetera, so that uh, not only for our own token offering, but clients down the road, they can move their tokens or have their their investors move their tokens in and out of their own exchange 
and onto other exchanges as well. So pretty cool. Todd, I'm going to hand it back to you and let you talk about the program, the TBI program, as it relates to where we're focused here in the future with blockchain companies. Yeah. So in just a bit here, we will go through a bit of a timeline of when we got started, how we got into this space, some of the first programs or sectors or licensees that we moved into. But right now, I'm going to talk about where we're going in the future. You know, we have a number of licensings that oper licenses that operate in sports verticals, uh, racing, you know, uh, verticals, hunting and fishing space. But we really believe that, as Ken alluded to, that a number of companies are going to need more and more access to the technology that we can provide to help them facilitate their entry into the blockchain, cryptocurrency, and decentralized space. Uh, we really think that there's going to be a lot of companies and a lot of projects that are going to be quickly trying to move to take advantage of this quickly growing sector. And we really think that we've got a really a model that's going to be a stocking horse that a lot of other companies will follow, but also that we're going to be able to provide these companies with a lot of tools and expertise to be able to raise their own capital, you know, find their own developers, uh, understand where the trends of things are going and, and, and having the access of capital to the direction, you know, that they need to be able to grow properly. Now, we make money, if you're wondering, on the companies that are in our program, uh, a little bit more than your traditional tech incubator, which sometimes only has about a 7 to 10, maybe on the higher side, a 12% position in those companies. Uh, we take a 15% stake, non-dilutive, so that when that company goes through its liquidity event, be it an acquisition or a merger or an initial public offering, uh, we don't get diluted out. And therefore, our public company shareholders uh, know that there is going to be a set value that adds to our balance sheet, and then they can do the math based on how valuable they see our company and how that should relate to our market cap and stock price. But... We also take a 5% revenue fee on each one of these companies, even beyond that liquidity event because of the licensing of our technology into that company. Uh, there's very, uh, there's, I should say there's quite a few benefits for a, an acquiring company uh, to be able to not worry about the technology and not worry about the ongoing maintenance and uh, development of that technology and that's where our 5% fee really comes into play for them. Now, as we get into, as Todd alluded, the blockchain uh, cryptocurrency space, we will be looking at the value of having other tokens uh, and, and uh, uh, digital assets on our books as well. So it's very exciting for us to get into 2022 after working on this for the last few years so that we can we could really expand out the value on our balance sheet moving forward and not just with our own token offering but with token offerings we will be helping other companies with all right so todd i'm going to hand it off to you to just talk a little bit about uh how we target uh these niche industries and maybe uh if you want to talk about how we're going to target some of the blockchain uh, related companies here in the near future right so, you know, one of the, the things that we've always intended to do when we enter into a new market or a new sector is find an area that is not being properly served by technology. You know, an area that has a number of individuals that are like-minded, that are very enthusiastic about the space that they operate, uh, but there's just not a safe space for them to be able to share ideas, collaborate, and a space, you know, that's a social community that's blocking out a lot of the other white noise or distractions that are available on other social platforms like Facebook and Twitter that are agnostic platforms that are not properly serving niche communities and more bringing in an audience that just wants to talk about politics or just generally things that are going on in life. Well, we've really focused on nurturing some of these subcultures you know, and, and, and helping to provide them the tools to be able to have this safe space to be able to interact, 
but also we want to know that there is an, an a real option and a direction to be able to recognize a financial benefit in this space, be able to bring it to a liquidity event, making sure that we're providing a tool that's accretive to another company out there that can utilize our platform to disseminate information and with a strong user base that's got really, you know, sticky components to it and, and really bringing in these enthusiasts to really care about these networks. So, Along with that, we really believe with, that the future growth is going to be in this blockchain space and that we're really going to have the tools to be able to nurture companies in that space. But before we go into that too much, let's go into a little bit of the history of where we came from and how we chose to enter this. We started as a tech incubator, as you can see here in 2013. The company started in Denver, Colorado. At that time, there was a push to bring about legalization or recreational use in the cannabis space. That was an industry under prohibition that had been totally overlooked in technology, but there was a huge community of enthusiasts there. Weed Life was born for that reason. That was a consumer to consumer platform for enthusiasts, but we also knew that there were more businesses that were entering the space that needed access to more resources to be able to grow their business and that's why we started MJ Link in 2014, which was a consumer to consumer platform, more so could be thought of as almost a LinkedIn for the cannabis sector. Moving forward, we decided that there was more opportunities in sports verticals and also primarily in hunting and fishing where there is a multi-trillion dollar business uh, industry that has been entirely overlooked by technology. Most of the mom and pop retailers are only able to sell their products locally or going to local trade shows, which we have known has been largely disrupted due to COVID-19. And this industry desperately needs a platform like ours to be able to really bring everyone together into a social community. 2016, we we want launched Like RE. This is obviously part of Ken's background. If anyone's familiar, he was one of the early stage database engineers and founders at Realtor.com. Like RE is is a real estate division that is intended to be owned by that community, owned by those real estate agents, and really nurtured by that community. We also started bringing in sports verticals. In 2017, we had Racket Star, which is for tennis and other racket enthusiasts like pickleball and others. We brought on cycle fans, foot post for the soccer community. In 2018, we saw a huge potential in the hemp and CBD space. So we brought on Hemp Talk, which can also have the capabilities to eventually be an e marketplace in that sector. And then we also had for the cannabis investing community, MJ Invest, which was brought in in 2019, and also communities for racing and, 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 and sports racing, uh, car racing enthusiasts. And we in RV is for the travel and motor vehicle industry, which of course has grown rapidly uh, during this time, during this COVID-19 pandemic that we've been going through. This has brought us up currently, when we lost uh, at the end of 2021, our space network, and now in 2022, Fungilio, our NFT exchange platform, our first in the blockchain space. Now, let's talk about for a second the initial coin offering that we have just uh, uh, launched. The concept here for us isn't just to get a token out there. Uh, in the summer of 2017, we began to work on our white paper because at that time we were just launching out of beta and into a, uh, a solid um, uh, system, our, our e-commerce and our marketplace. The reason for that was by that time, Hunt Post uh, was evolving and, to, and it was really uh, embracing uh, these local trade show operators that Todd mentioned just a few minutes ago. Uh, and these trade show operators have hundreds and thousands of uh, uh, vendors that participate. Uh, some of them for decades have been participating at particular shows that were looking to somehow get online and get in front of that same sort of audience that shows up 
at these trade shows. And the same concept is across the board in all of the, the niche industries that we're in, just you know, slightly different. And of course, the hunting, fishing, and camping industry being so big uh, made us very uh, made us focus on how could we eventually come up with an ecosphere around these operators in these particular niche industries. And so it only made sense that looking forward five or 10 years down the road that we would have our own currency that could be moved back and forth between retailers and consumers that in oftentimes uh, or often cases they were in other countries and their own fiat currency might be going through inflation or deflation depending on the future. So we wanted to get our own coin out there inside of our system as a utility coin to help you know, more or less tether the value of these products and the currency that was being used to purchase these products or, or sell these products back and forth. Now, fast forward, as we got into this uh, last year, 2021, uh, we had evolved so far in that uh, e-commerce system with those niche um, uh, vendors and retailers that it was time for us to get the token into the system. And now that the utility token is in the system or all of the networks that participate in our TBI program, uh, we have the utility of that at work. And as a result, uh, in Q1 of this year, we are at roughly 240 plus million of those tokens that have been mined inside of those networks. And we expect that to continue to grow so that over the next 12 to 24 months, we will exhaust the number of, of tokens, WDLF tokens, uh, that get earned through that uh, utility. Now, with this initial coin offering, uh, we uh, uh, launched the token as an ERC-20 token, uh, which is an Ethereum-based token. That was in part because of all of the different ways that the Ethereum token can, can, can move throughout the blockchain that some of the other uh, token uh, platforms uh, just aren't there yet with. Uh, and we wanted to make certain that there was some, some real universal use case for that token so that it could be moved in and out of other uh, decentralized applications in the future. And speaking of decentralized applications in the future, our goal here is to take our existing platform, our existing technology that we license to our TBI uh, program participants and decentralize that as well. And so it was very important for us to be able to do that on the Ethereum blockchain. Now, those that participate in the ICO will be able to yield farm that uh, token uh, so that they can earn additional tokens over a period of time. Because they are locked up, if you will, under a 506C offering for a minimum of six months. And so they can yield uh, farm that token during that period. This increases the value of the token at the end of that lockup period for them. Uh, but even moreover, because of the utility aspect of the token and how quickly it's being earned throughout the networks uh, and mined, uh, you know, there's a, a demand on the token, which we think will increase the value. So we'll just see how that turns out. And Todd, I'm going to hand it back over to you so that uh, you can talk a little bit about the timeline as it relates to us getting into uh, the crypto space and of course, our own blockchain technology that we've had in place for years. Yeah, so you know, you guys can see that the, the roadmap right there on the screen, you know, we launched back in 2013 you know, with the intention of, of building these individual niche networks that really serve these communities. But as Ken alluded to, uh, you know, for, for, for years now, we built our technology using the underlining blockchain technology, uh, using underlining blockchain and artificial intelligence to really run our networks. And we've always believed that when the timing was right, for us that we would get into this space of having a native currency that could be transacted 
earn staked yield on our network, uh, building out this technology for many years, which has brought us to where we are today, where we think that we've really put these tools in place that can help nurture our own licensees that are in our networks and also bring on new companies into our tech incubator that will be able to quickly accelerate all of the needs that they have to be able to really take advantage of this blossoming sector. So let's talk about our management team for just a second. You know, oftentimes I'll get questioned, well, why aren't you adding more and more people to the board and to your advisory group? And, and in fact, we do. We just don't have enough slide space to put everyone on there. We actually have a little over 200 uh, advisors to the company in the niche industries that we uh, service through our TBI program. Uh, we're now adding to that group. Uh, as we have approached uh, the end of last year and we're into this year, getting into uh, the blockchain space and really having so many more conversations with companies that we will eventually bring in to our TBI program that are in the crypto space. Uh, there's a finite number of, of really well-educated and um, uh, senior level, if you will, people who have been in the space for five to 10 years now and we're just fortunate to be that well connected with these people going into uh, our project, our uh, WDLF token project. Uh, and as we get into this next year, being able to bring them on. So I'm not going to bore you with uh, you know countless slides, uh, but this is our core group. And of course, it's myself and Todd Markey, if you're familiar with our company and the podcasts that we do, you are familiar with, uh, with our mugs and our background. Uh, our deck, uh, which isn't quite showing up just right here on this uh, system here, we'll work on that next time, uh, but it is available for download right off of our website. So just go to www.wdlf.ai and you can download the deck and read through our, uh, our bios. And on that, uh, we only have a few minutes left, so I'm <laughs> going to wrap up and turn it over to any Q&A that we, uh, we might have coming in. Wonderful. Thank you, gentlemen. We do have a few questions for you. Not a lot of time, but let's try to get a few in. So from Colin Ward, uh, he wants to know, is the model going to change at all with the new branding? Uh, well, what we just described there is the model, so it won't it won't change from what we just described. Uh, not, not anytime soon anyway. Okay. Uh, Deb Phelps wants to know if you fund your incubated companies through the public company, or do you source funding from other platforms other than your own company? That's a great, great question. And we make it uh, uh, very clear that we don't do any of the, the funding of the companies that come into our program. Uh, this year, we're, we're even more so focused on uh, accelerator uh, uh, companies out there like uh, Techstars and Y Combinator. Uh, in companies that that make it through that seed round and they're ready to go to that next stage. That's where we come in uh, to help them really strategize to get to that liquidity event. Yeah, just to put a little extra clarity there, I think it's important to note for anyone listening that these companies all have their own independent management teams. They've all raised, they've all worked to raise their own seed capital to understand the businesses that they operate and the potential that they have or the potential liquidity events that they've identified. And they come to us and we deem whether or not it's an appropriate you know, fit for what we do and that we can help them to accelerate getting to their goal of reaching a liquidity event. All right, thank you for that. One more quick uh, question to um, complete this presentation. First of all, it's a th congratulations from Steven Sanchez. He says, congrats on your recent rebound in the stock. His question is, if you have any idea of how many shares were issued since 1231. Uh, since 1231, well, we, we actually haven't issued any new shares at all. So I guess that answer that, that answers that question. <laughs> yeah, no new shares. Okay. Well, let's take one more. Marta Owen uh, asks, what, cri what criteria do you look for in a company you will take under your wing? And is there a minimum requirement that must be met? You know, the first thing that we look at is, uh, what's the opportunity for an exit strategy with that company? Because that's the business that we're in. We 
we only make uh, money and increase value to the company by uh, having those companies really get through that liquidity event and certainly grow through that liquidity event. That's where uh, the 5% on the revenue side and the 15% on the stake side uh, is very valuable to you as a public shareholder. Um, so that's the first and foremost. And we've had a number of companies that have approached us in industries that, uh, you know, there's just too much competition in that industry. And we don't think those particular companies will reach a liquidity event. So we really cherry pick the ones that uh, that look the best for us. Great. Well, thank you, gentlemen, so much for joining us again on the Emerging Growth Conference. Please join us again with some updates. Thanks for having us back. We'll see you yeah, soon. Forward. Okay, everyone, stay with us as the last presenters coming on. We're going to transition to them right now.